I want us to look at some slides that deal with sculpture. But the first one, if you notice, is not sculpture at all. It's 2D. You know, 2D is, is flat. But the artist is attempting to give us that feeling of three dimension by using that one point perspective that we've worked on in class. So there's the one point perspective. There's the large figure in the foreground and it's also white. It's not just he was didn't have any paint, he just decided to make it very light so that would bring it close to the foreground. And the placement brings it close to the foreground. And then it goes back into space. And then there's a smaller picture of a figure in the background that gives it that scale. So we can look and compare between these two figures here. Here, we're getting closer. A large figure in the foreground, right? And then there's like almost like a flatness of this background with texture and pattern. But this is not just a painted surface. This is, you can see here, this is cut aluminum. So this is basically kind of like three, slightly 3D. It, it has a more of a texture, a physical texture to it. Now we're going to sculpture. And you can see like these sculpture, sculptural forms. What's good here in, in this, in this uh, slide is that it shows the importance of two things. One is light and shadow. Light and shadow help a lot when it comes to uh, showing sculpture. The other thing that it shows is that you have to have, um, you have to be able to look at sculpture from more than one side. You know, looking at it from the back, from the front, uh, in this case, is you know, the photographer made four different images so that we can move around and see, um, looking at the sculpture. Now, looking at it, you can see that it's dealing with weight and, and it almost gives you a feeling like the top piece is going to fall off any minute, the way the artist uh, laid out the, the, the pieces. Here, this is uh, metal, and I'm glad, again, I'm glad that you can see this uh, here because on the screen in a classroom setting, you wouldn't be able to see the, the shapes that are in here, like right in here. This is going in. This is moving out. This is what we call a tectonic form. It has like a solid mass. It's, uh, as you can see, this form here jets out. So we have what we call concave forms, and then we have convex forms, and it's very almost, uh, I wouldn't say it's not organic, but it's non-organic. More geometric in this, in this format. Now here, this is a very open formed cantilevered. We call it cantilevered it's because it moves out in space here and it has just this one little section right here that's kind of like holding this thing in space. So this is like what we call like a really open space design for a sculpture. This one, you can see the title is called Wind Seeker. So at the top, right in here, this is these movable pieces. So in set, these are this is a kinetic art piece because it moves. They use repetitive shapes here, like these almost like it was growing out of the ground. And by doing that, it gives what we call harmony that ties the work together. So when you work on your project, think about harmony, repetition. It gives you that form and rhythm and movement. See, you can see these shapes, they move 
to, almost together in harmony and movement. Again here, repetition, open space. It's made to work with the architecture. You can walk through it, but these shapes tie in together to create harmony, harmony. And then they also added a massive shape here. It gives kind of balances off the design. You can see these two shapes are like pressing in against one another. They give it the strength. This is what we call, a, this is actually an interior. It's a nice piece like this. If we could see it at the, at the Newark Museum, they have something like this. It's, it's inside and it's in an environment. So this is made up out of, you can see it says mirrors and uh, wood frame. So this is more or less what we call an installation. You can literally go in into the space but at the museum they would they just put a they rope it off so you can look at it from the from the outside looking in but you can see how really interesting space You're working with glass and mirrors this piece this is what we call minimalism minimalism and it relies on repetition and if you notice, like right about here, this is pro no, right here. This is eye level. You see, you can't see the top, nor can you see the bottom. This is something we didn't also we, we looked at <coughs> when we were looking at perspective. That as your eye moves down, you see the top. As your eye moves up, you see underneath. But it's very simplistic. Now the problem usually with something like this is something that's so minimal. You have to be perfect. And these are perfectly aligned. Front, back, spacing, everything is perfectly aligned. That's part of the thing. The, the idea with minimalism is not supposed to have any association with anything. This is what we call junk sculpture. Keep an eye on that. In fact, you can start collecting some, look around and see if you have some junk. Often, you know, people will go out and try to buy stuff. But see, the artists will go out and find stuff. Found that We call it found object sculpture. And they make up stuff. Now, yours may not be as crazy and wild as this one. But they use different objects. You can see a frame in there right in here like a frame and you see these almost like a honeycomb shapes and all kinds of little things that they put together to make a sculpture and it's an open design you can move through it it's not solid like the tectonic form this one right here design wise is called a radial design and you can see in radial design it radiates outward radiates this way, this way, moves out. It even has a circle in the middle to indicate that, that how it radiates out. Here, this is more or less like a, more of a tectonic form, but in a figure, figurative way. And it shows movement. And these folds here in the, on the sides here really help to give you that feeling of movement. These aren't just folds, but but they use these folds. Now here, this is this this is Alexander Calder. He was said to be the inventor of the mobile. Many of us think about the mobile, and we think about children's play toys that in the crib where they can look up and they see things floating around. Again, this one. Is cantilevered, similar to the sculpture that we looked at before. See the weight, this large red over here, is the weight that balances out these smallest circles over here on that side, and here. This is meant to move also, so this is kinetic. 
This is kinetic in nature. Now, one of the things that he thinks about, he's similar to, and we haven't really talked about color, but we'll talk about color. Um, he uses the red, which is a very strong color. It really stands out. And to balance it out, he has a blue here, smaller blue, and he has a number of smaller colors here. These colors are, if you add them together, they balance out to this red. And so that's kind of like, it's almost like mathematically, he thinks about how he's going to balance this stuff out. And then the form here is more of like an organic form holding the base down for the base. Here, this is an environmental sculpture, which also incorporates some of the earth here moving up on the side of the sculpture. On the side here, we really can't even see it. So you see like some of these sculptures are designed to be made to work with the environment. Again, I can t this is minimalism again. Uh, very minimalistic. I had somebody to try to do something like this was really difficult because each one of these pieces we can't see between them but they're probably spaced out perfectly balanced out going up through space like that and showing this perspective towards our eye but it's very simple now to construct it is not the easiest thing in the world canvas covered over plywood that means somebody had to cut these pieces out perfectly in order for them to fit in this space like this now here's our assignment or our project you can see these two students here they actually were students that came these were design majors so I'm going to show you some work that was done by some of the art majors and design majors and then as we go through some of the slides we'll see some samples of some of the artwork that was done by uh, intro to art students so you have like two different levels so let's take a look so you can see here this boat that was designed and made this is made entirely of paper so it's mind-blowing but it was entirely made of paper including what looks like string here, that's paper. That's paper. Somebody that's willing to put in the time and the, and the hours and the effort can do some fantastic things. And so this student, of course, this was an excellent student in many ways. Here again, you can see this was all made of paper. I'll show you a close-up of the boat. See, all this is paper. Sometimes you can get into a zone. She she really got into the zone when she was making this. Uh, she came in the day after she did started working on it and she said she couldn't stop. She started working on it and she couldn't stop. And sometimes that happens with art. And sometimes that might even happen with you as you're working on something because especially now being home you, you may need something that you can do that takes your mind away from all the stress that's that's going on in your lives. So here's again, this paper here is not the same as our notebook paper. This is made with Bristol, we call Bristol board. It's a little bit heavier paper, but some of these items here were made with thinner paper to, and so that they could be uh, rolled tightly like that. I don't expect you to do this kind of work. So here's another detail. Often uh, when you want to show something like some words and things like that, they're not wrote, this is not written, this is cut out. So with sculpture, we use light, light and shadow. Think Always think light and shadow. Here's a, a friend of hers. They were competitive. So she did this uh, car with paper entirely with paper. Here's another view of the car with paper. Here's a uh, project 
or still life, student made a still life with, with paper. This area here is uh, cut out and then with a piece of sheet of paper here underneath to make it look like it was weaved, like it's weaved paper and open. Here the words again were cut out. So the light and shadow, let me show you this form in here. Here again, these are art students, so don't don't get bent out of shape. The hand, this there's a wire structure underneath this. This area here, this is weaved paper. So that's something that you can you can consider. Something like that, that's weaved paper. Okay. Okay, so now here this is con labor con intensive but a lot of texture. To create that texture and repetition, they use these similar forms here. Now these basically are like one sheet of paper cut, cut out, and then pulled out to make that. They're not like a thousand sheet pieces of paper. This is an intro to art student. You can see here they cut they made like a butterfly. Again. When you photograph it and send it to me, look at the light source. Try not to make it with flat light. Maybe bring it to a window or use light from the side to show off your piece. You want to show your work to the best way, the best possible possible way that you can. Here's another piece by an intro to art major. So different types of texture moving around this reef. This was made by an intro to art major. They had a vision to make a bridge. Again, this was an uh, intro to art major. This is a trolley. They made a trolley out of paper. Here's, this was made by an intro also. So you can see like these pieces, these squares and rectangles, let's put them together and created this structure. It's similar to one of the structures we saw in our the sculptural pieces where they were like these large uh, square pieces. But the harmony, what holds it together is the harmony. Here this was a, a bird cut out here and then with these leaf forms that were cut out to create this sculptural bird. It's another abstract, more abstract, kind of, this kind of leafing kind of thing here with the paper and paper rolls to create an interesting kind of design. And this is the final one. This is, uh, you can see it's cut out. Once you cut out the, the design and then went back in and did some folding and flipping and twirling to create an interesting design. With all of these spaces, it creates, it's going to create nice light and shadow to create a nice design.